This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person. I bought jeans. Er, 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 er. And they're fancy ones. They're very nice. Thank you. Yes, I don't, uh, you're actually talking to the right person. I don't know if you know this, uh, but I uh, used to work for a high-end jean company. No way. In retail, yes. <laughs> what, so, what was the high-end jean company? Uh, well, uh, Walmart. Mid, mid-range. Uh, <laughs> Lucky Brand. Oh, Lucky, Lucky Brand, Brand jeans. jeans. I remember there was a kid in my class, Christopher, and when I was growing up, and he wore Lucky Brand jeans, and he was like, you've got to go. It's the, he was always talking about them. They Shout do out in the employee in the employee like you know uh, get to know you tutorial. They're like keep an eye for Christopher. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's our biggest brand ambassador, but he also sucks. He sucks. Oh, no. God, he sucks. Yeah, so, but yeah. Christopher um, wore Lucky Brands, and so do you. Oh, I don't anymore. That's the oh. old me, and he can't come to the phone right now. Nice. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I I went full um, like accept myself. E boy cyber goth in my in my current era, so I'm like I don't even think I have jeans that fit. I know, and honestly, it's mostly because I want utility clothing. Because I know the jeans are sort of out fashion wise. Really? I don't even know. I, I huh. lose track, but I've heard that they're out, and so I am sort of in the need for utility clothing. Because I was buying nice pants, not having utility clothing, wearing my nice pants, ruining them. Yep, getting sauce all over them, etc. Yeah. And then it's time to go out to a fancy event, and I'm wearing sauce covered dress pants. Sure. But maybe that's, you know, this generation's like we did the ripped jeans. Um, maybe it's saucy dress pants coming up soon. By the way, saucy dress pants, you can get them on milesbonsignor.com. <laughs> They're covered. I pre sauce them in general sews. <laughs> These are hand sauced <laughs> pants, you guys. Made in Los Angeles. Yeah, you know, sauced in Los Angeles. Sauced in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's packaged <laughs> in Los Angeles. Like you're still doing the fast fashion, yeah. but you're like, as a product of LA. They come to here, yeah. I sauce them and repackage them, send them yes. out to the people. You get the lower quality like truffle mushrooms, but they pack them in France. They still like charge a lot. And you're They're like, fresh, you actually. know these aren't going to taste as good. They're going to taste like ass. But Damien, we lose eyes. your whole audience well, with that. <laughs> They're going to love Jeans that. and truffle. Jeans and truffle. Isn't it the worst when you're sipping on truffle milk? <laughs> And then people are like, can I have money? And you're like, no. No, I've got no. my jeans. Well, Damien Hives, welcome to the show. You know Damien from Smosh. You know Damien from Twitch. You know Damien from all over the place. If you've played a video game, Damien's voice is probably in it. Oh, shucks. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm all over the place. Yeah. And I'm trying to focus up here soon. But um, yeah, thank you. I, it, yeah, Starfield's the most recent one. Yeah. That's, that's been cool to see come out because that... I booked like when I first started with Smosh. So it's sort of like bookended this whole part of my like internet life. It's oh, that's like, so cool. First to last. Yeah. Thank when you. you play, how did you feel when you heard your voice in the game? Um, it was a very special moment. I um, I decided to stream that um, yeah. because I was like, I want to share this with people. I didn't yeah. have a stream community before uh -huh. this and I ended up uploading the VOD to my YouTube channel, which is nothing but VODs right now. Maybe one day, <laughs> something else. One um, day. But um, it was very special and it was very interesting to like, able to pick out like oh i'm a little younger there like yeah. in that scene i'm a little younger in this scene i'm a little older um right and you know because i filmed it or recorded it rather across like five six years um i can hear the accent shift a bit i can hear my voice shift a bit and i just yeah. it, it really brings me back to like where i was in my life at time of recording um oh that's so interesting it's yeah really it's special. a time capsule it of is. like when you started and then when you finished probably yeah yeah and i you know what i've been worried about it for for years to be honest because <laughs> I was still like, I've learned a lot about the technique and yeah. you know, grown as an actor in the past five or six years. So I was like, oh, a product's coming out now <laughs> that will be representative of me now that yeah. I'm like flying blind with when I'm recording. <laughs> like, uh oh. So I'm just glad it, it turned out okay. Um, and people seem to really like the character. Um, it's Heller for anybody yeah. who uh, doesn't know, he's a potential companion. Mm -hmm. um, and I love. I love the game and I love yeah. the performance and I'm, I'm really proud of it. I'm just really stoked. Yeah, I yeah. know. Love the game. And I spent a lot of time like just sort of working on my ship. Mm. I was just like nice. for a couple days there, every time I would log yeah. in, I'd just be like, I'm just going to do 10 minutes on the ship. And I would do like two hours, be yep. like moving the pieces around <laughs> and then be like, actually scratch all of that. No, I'm going to start no. over on the ship. That's what it's for, though. Yeah, it's, right. It's, no, I loved it. it it's another so new Skyrim. Like, you're yeah. just going to be like, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time he's a little cat guy. 
<laughs> a little cat it's ship. A little cat guy, yeah, and that's what we'll do. Yeah. Well, Damien, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, the phones are obviously ringing off the gash dang hook. You, I know you have a noise gate, but like it is the cacophony in this room. Is, yeah, I have them ringing live in the room. People like don't know that. Edgar People Allan Poe poem of just the madness I feel around me. <laughs> that's right. Just encroaching. I really got to get back into Poe. You know, you got to get into Poe. <laughs> Uh, he's always, people are discovering new poems by Poe every day. New There's, poems. Yeah, new poem. <laughs> new Poe just dropped. Have new you heard Poe. the new Poe? Have you heard of new Poe? Isn't it crazy? There was a time where that was a thing that you could say and not sound absolutely unhinged. Yeah, because it would be new. Yeah. You're like, do you hear Poe's new joint? Oh, it's all about bells and they're making them, <laughs> get this, they're making them crazy. They're making him time. wild, dude. You got it. We got to go down to the newsstand <laughs> to get Poe's new shit. <laughs> His forehead got bigger. Yeah. He's even sadder now. There's people in Times Square being like, new Poe, new hey. Poe. Like, I don't know. New Poe. Is this the real one? Because yeah. I don't want no bootleg. No, I want the real Poe. It's definitely a bootleg. Um, well, Damien, what makes you a perfect person here to answer the calls and give the people advice on the horn? Oh, man. Miles, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Um, so uh, as an autistic fellow, um, I have been masking for years mm. uh, just to fit in and survive, <laughs> um, which means I've really had to study uh, all sorts of stuff uh, That's a good point. To, to figure it out. Um, so <laughs> and I'm only just now unpacking that. But I realized like, oh, I've really crafted like a nice little survival kit for myself. So You're right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really good at seeing all sides of things. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at, you know, uh, trusting my emotions. I'm also good at gaslighting myself. Oh, interesting. Um, Speak on that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ah, I don't know. It's, you see things one way in a world that is not generally built for you. And yeah. if you know, you get the mindset of like, well, nine people can't be you know, crazy. If they're saying I'm wrong about something like, there you go. Right. And then you start to unpack it and you're like, Oh no. Our brains just work differently. And for me, nine people are wrong. That's so, right. Yeah. Toothpaste, nine out of 10 doctors. And that one doctor, <laughs> I think they're using that like chewing branch. Yeah. You know? That's right. Which I think is 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 a the better good way. idea. The better way. But it, it, I don't like the taste personally. No, personally, I can't use celery as a floss. No, thank you. Yeah. And it thank also, you, it takes, thank you for saying, you for saying <laughs> you're so brave. And, uh, you know, it, t it burns calories to even eat celery and then That's to do the back say. and forth. Is that it's true? Like, um, it's a thing that I heard and I'm going to say it like I'll, it's a fact. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'll keep it. Yeah. Cause every time I eat celery, I'm like, actually, I'm really doing a good job being healthy. I'm pretty brave. I'm like pretty brave for eating celery. I, I'm pretty, it's, this is kind of my like wake up and go routine. That's right. Have a celery and you know, get your grind on. Well, everyone, we hope you're having a celery and getting your grind on out there because we've got to get to the phone lines. But before we do, if you like the show, hit up the Patreon baby, because there's ad free extended versions of every single episode, including this one where we waxed about video games. What we're playing, how we do it, and basically everything about being a capital G gamer. Yeah, and we define that in the Patreon stuff. That's so right. You're not going to know what we mean, mm -hmm. and I'm going to gatekeep that from you. We're gatekeeping the Patreon. But um, uh, head over there and get juicy stuff. Also, there's a bonus show on Fridays where I call back people from the show to get their updates and close the loop on if my advice actually was life-changing, if it was actually perfect at all. Uh, like, we, we can't contact them there. <laughs> They're dead. They're dead. They all die. All Mr. Yeah, after I give advice. <laughs> this is the new creepy pause of like, have you heard of the phone show that kills you? <laughs> like, yeah, it sucks. Everybody does. <laughs> Actually, there was a really interesting, I want to do an episode recently. Um, somebody <laughs> called in about a booty patrol car that says booty patrol on it and uh -huh. a little peach that says booty patrol. And they is were it like, like a, is like a you know, female body inspector, like dad shirt kind of yes. vibe. That's really gross. But okay, the girl, go but, on. But it but, is gross. Okay. But the girl called in because she was like, I want to hook up with the booty patrol guy. Oh no. And so, I, know. I don't think it'll be hard, but I don't I think, I think it'll be hard to leave. That's what not I to said. get in. But That's what I said. <laughs> so Amazing. then I got sent a link to an article. I have to call her back because the link to the article is about the booty patrol car being impounded by the police in Florida. Okay. Is it impounded because I don't know. he's I, gone missing? I haven't read the article. Okay. I'm waiting to do it for a bonus episode. Boogeyman has been a typo this whole time. It's Booty Man. <laughs> it's and like, booty he's man. just lurking. They're like, yeah, he disappeared for another 10 years. Yeah. Can't wait for the next blood moon. The like, Booty Man. <laughs> the Booty Man. The Booty Man rises. Well, <laughs> that's going on the soundboard. I've returned. But <laughs> the Booty Man rises. We got to get to the phone lines. Let's do it. Damien. Let's absolutely hit it. Hi, Miles. My boyfriend's ex has been wanting him to wash her dirty underwear, and I just don't feel comfortable with that. I want to know Thanks, how. Bye. I want to know how we got to that situation because I think that there's no like the laundry. Yeah, for, your ex shouldn't be asking you to do laundry at all. 
Uh, that's absolutely right. Um, mm. Miles, I, you know what? <laughs> there are some things that you're like, oh, this is a relatable issue. This one, I'm like, I yeah. think we have to get down to the building blocks of like, mm. what is the nature of this relationship? Yeah, that's a really good point. Cause it's like, especially because I wonder if it's dirty underwear. She's just surmising that the ex is like, I'd like you to do all my laundry. Who knows? But that was the whole thing. That was the whole voicemail. And now we're calling. Okay. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hello. You called perfect person. And I'm here to call you back. I'm here with Damien Haas of Smosh fame. Hi there. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? I literally call all the time with all my problems, and I'm like, there has to answer one. That's right. And here's the one. You got in, baby. Woo. So tell me, uh, first of all, we're going to need a fake name for you. Damien, what's the fake name that we're going to call yeah. this person? Um, uh, Gwynevive. Gwynevive. We're Gwyn so excited Gwynevive. to have you on the show. Okay. Now, why don't you tell me about what's going on? Okay, well, which one? What was the story I told? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was the story I told? <laughs> How many times did you call in, Gwynevive? <laughs> <laughs> Too many times. I have so much about baby mama that I complain about. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so you've, you've already called, given us yeah, some give, good context. There you there go. We so, go. So you called in about your ex, your boyfriend's ex is wanting him to wash her dirty underwear. Is what was the voicemail we heard? Yes. So where should I even start? There's so much. Um, Great question. So <laughs> I'm uh, my boy. <laughs> my boyfriend and I have been together for a few months. Mm -hmm. And he has a daughter. Okay. And it's a weird custody thing. Um, he gets her more times than she does. But recently, she's become really jealous of me because her daughter has started to call me mommy. Super tough, um, yeah. <laughs> um, and the last time she was here, she brought all of her dirty clothes unannounced. And mm. more than half of it was just bras and underwear. <laughs> And so I said, absolutely not. Oh, You're wow. not doing that. Wait, hang on. Was, did she want you to do them or she just wanted to do them at your house? She wanted him to do it. Sorry, this story is not as juicy, but she's the <laughs> one who wants him to do all of her laundry. And her excuse is, well, your daughter's laundry is in here also. Oh, but she has a washer and dryer at her place. I see. Yeah, that makes so little sense to bring all of the laundry over to your house to have it be done. Well, you said this is the least juicy part of the story. Well, to you, what is the juicier part of the story? Yeah, if this is easy mode, like, <laughs> yeah, right. let's crank it up. This is this is Miles Bonsignor here. We got That's right. <laughs> so it's a so she does not like me. Yeah. Because her daughter is very close with me. Her daughter mm -hmm. is uh, turning four actually on January 4th. So it's her golden birthday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, so she doesn't like me and the drama starts with first off. She's not over him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They had a child together. So, of course. Sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, she wants a relationship with me, which mm -hmm. I understand, but she's also a little bit of a narcissist. Mm. So everyone that becomes her friend becomes her best friend and she doesn't have friends. Got it. So, gotcha. so it's, sort of, it's, was, it's the like track of we're best friends until it ends horribly kind of thing. And then you're the devil because. Yeah, yeah. Right. So when you say narcissist, you don't just mean like obsessed with herself. It's, it's very much like you're talking potentially yeah. sort of the clinical pattern of like. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so bad. She couldn't get her daughter taken away. That's how bad it is. So gotcha. She doesn't <laughs> like me. <laughs> okay. Because okay. her daughter feels safe with me. Yeah. Right. And he, I, so I, I stopped messaging her because it became too much. Mm. But everyone was telling me, she keeps asking about you. She keeps asking about you. Mm. And so I was like, fine, I'll send a mature message saying, listen, I get it. I'm with your baby daddy. Mm. But I, like, I was basically like, you know, I could be a lot worse because I'm going into social work. So I could have just completely been like, right. this is what you did. This is what you did. But I didn't. Sorry. Sure. Every like I was listening to your podcast yesterday and someone was like, it's so nerve wracking. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm lost in my story. No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, first of all, you're doing great. Yeah. And second of all, it sounds okay. like um, what I'm getting from this is that one, you're like uh, handling this really well, mm -hmm. I would say. And I think also <laughs> it's important to remember that even though it doesn't feel like it, you were in the power position in this scenario. Like the reason that she is having trouble with you is because you're like really great. Yeah. Like, and great with the daughter. Right? Thank you. And, and that's like, if she's feeling jealous or whatever, and she's taking out it on you in like some sort of radical way, yeah. it's because you're actually awesome. I yes, would... thank you. And like, I totally get it. I Her daughter's bedroom, I painted it. I gave yeah. it a whole new makeover. Mm -hmm. I feed her. So that was one thing. She was like, you're playing house. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm feeding her daughter, putting up Halloween decorations. She said you were playing house. 
That's that's bizarre. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Th- this is this seems to me uh, like somebody that you want to just like give the natural native dose of like, hey, how's it going? Like, be sweet to right. just to kind of keep them off of your back. But Damien, you were going to say something. Well, yeah. Out, yeah. Out of curiosity, Guinevere, is this your baby? Excuse me. Is this your partner's um, first like more serious relationship since mm. being with the baby mama? Yes. Okay. I'm the first person okay, yeah. since he's been with her to also have met his daughter. Okay. Um, they were together for five plus years, but she, you couldn't talk to her really because it was walking on eggshells. Like yeah. I've talked to her on the phone before for five minutes and afterwards I feel done for the day. Yeah. You're like, right. why I don't are my understand. shoulders I, like, I don't, <laughs> like, Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Mine are too right now. I don't, I like, you just can't get away from the negativity Right. And I've gone through a lot of therapies. I'm going into social work. I know how that brain works. Yeah. And so I know I can't win, but I want to like, I guess like a advice I need is how do I talk to her? Cause I know she's not going to listen. So I could literally sing the ABCs, but how can I get yeah. what I want off my chest and not seem like an asshole, but also know that she's not going to listen. Okay. Great question. Probably like the way you interact with this type of person, because I've interacted with people like this in the sure. past where it's just like, okay, they are clearly, w- when you interact with someone who's clearly going through something, mm-hmm. you sort of have to have this protective force field that's like whenever they say something that is them reacting inappropriately, you kind of have to just mm-hmm. like ignore that part of it and communicate mm-hmm. with who it's, so they, with, it's so fucking hard, but I think probably you have to communicate <laughs> with like who they are inside of this like protective shell of inappropriate behavior, because this is not someone that you I need don't even to know who it is. Yeah, yeah. I know, but like, this is not someone you need to be close with. This is not someone yeah. you need to be like talking up with late at night. This is someone you need to interact with Thank because it's you. like essential for you probably. And you want to be on your good side just so that way your yeah. life is not more stressful. Yeah. But I would not, like, yes. I-, I would think more about like, how can you, uh, n- I don't know, like how can you sort of, hack the scenario to be, to slowly curry her favor with you. One of the ways I'm thinking that you do this mm-hmm. is like if uh, her daughter mentions her or something like that in conversation, like, oh, me and my mom did this, whatever, <laughs> text her. Oh, it's never that though. Oh, it's never that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's, would- it's always, she says to me, mommy said she's going to kill you. Okay. Insert fake name. I forgot it. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, did she? Yeah. If I may, you know, this sounds obviously like a very difficult situation to be yeah. in. Um, but, you know, you say you're going into social and work. I'm very young. And you're yeah. very young. And, yeah. you know, you recognize this sort of profile that potentially this person has psychologically. Mm-hmm. So you've already said it yourself. You can't really win. No. And you're not going to be able to say anything that makes them be like, okay, like they're going to weaponize other people against you. Yeah. They're going to weaponize your mm-hmm. own emotions and empathy against you. So I would mm-hmm. say there's different tiers of people you need to take care of in the situation. Tier number one, mm-hmm. Guinevere. Yes. You got to protect your peace and uh-huh. protect your safety emotionally or otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Um, next comes uh, your partner. Yeah. Like, he's a part of this too. You get to figure sure. out what the dynamic is and like, Realistically, you're yeah. not the one who should be fielding all of this information. No, it's, definitely. That's that's his bandage. I know. <laughs> and like, you know, and so that's that's an okay and safe thing to express. Yeah. And then and then comes the daughter, mm-hmm. and then comes mm-hmm. baby mama. Like that's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. No, I think you're totally right there. Where it's like, yeah, probably your partner should be handling this. At, at every point in turn, you did not elect to yes. spend any time or commitment to this woman. So I would say probably like that can be your partner's responsibility and you can express yeah. that to your partner. Have you tried expressing that to your partner? Oh, yes. But I think I need to give you guys her number. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give her a call. We loved, we loved, we loved to, <laughs> we'd oh love to hop on the phone. <laughs> I mean, I've talked to, we talked about it all the time because it's gotten really serious um, yeah. where like legal things have come up. For okay. sure. Um, yeah. But it's like, it's like a collaborative thing. And like my partner and I, we have talked about it. And like something we're thinking about just doing is just writing down how we feel mm, and then totally. just like reading it. Because I guess at the end of the day, what's the hardest for me, mm-hmm. I'm very stubborn. I like when I have something, my brain set on something, I have to do it. Mm-hmm. 
I know that I won't feel satisfied talking to her when I know she's not going to listen. Completely. Yeah, that's yeah. hard. Mm-hmm. It's it's you're Sorry, spending I'm emotional like jumping energy all and... over the place. I just yeah, <laughs> not at all. No, I think that you're like, totally. How do you... That's the hard thing. Yeah, I find that. Yeah, you're in the right mental headspace. I think. Like. Yeah. Tr- it's really hard to do because you're sort of feeling trapped by like having to interact with this person. But as much as you can, yeah. don't feel like you need to take care of that relationship. And more so, yes. you just need to take care of you and how you interact with this person, if at all. But I would kind of recommend like yeah. completely distancing, never texting them, having your partner do all of that legwork. Like it's not your responsibility. You know? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That, yes. And I completely agree. That and that's what I do, and then that is when I feel trapped because then I hear that she's been wondering where I am, but she's never reaches out to me. Yeah, yeah. Do, who's telling so, you that? The daughter? Um, no, my partner, and then the neighbor. So, but no like, one likes her. Yeah, it sounds like your partner is like. So why should I? Also acting <laughs> almost out of a place of not fear, but like obligation. And and I can't imagine being with someone five plus years and then also having a child together. Like, yeah, of course that's going to be complicated, but Guinevere, from everything I'm hearing, like mm. you seem pretty <laughs> sure in at least how you're feeling. Yeah. And do you mind if I ask yeah. how old you are? Cause you said you're young. Is yeah. that a, an appropriate thing? You don't have to answer. I, uh, no, I'm 21 and okay, my partner's sure. 23. He was a little pandemic baby. Okay. And, um, it's the sweetest little thing, but like, in social settings, she'll be in between your legs because of like sure. the pandemic. Which yeah, is right. Crazy. Oh. So, Guinevere, I, you sound very like emotionally intelligent yeah. and self aware and like very clear on what <laughs> your needs are here. I think one of the things, you know, I've, I've sort of had to learn for myself is. You, there's no situation where everyone is going to make it out in, in conflict, make mm-hmm. it out feeling perfect and safe and happy. And it is also not your responsibility to do that. So, mm-hmm. you know, everything we've said to do you, you're like, yes, I know that. I feel that. And yeah. it's like, okay, then if that's what you're feeling and that's what you already know, like, it sounds like what you're asking for is permission to feel those things. And yeah. Freely granted. Yeah. And by the way, it sounds like you needed to take a trip to the validation station Ooh. and you've actually yes. arrived. <laughs> you've actually <laughs> arrived you. and you're doing everything right and you don't need advice. You just need to hear that you're doing the right thing, yes. Winnevieve. Winnevieve. Uh, that is what I need. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, I also want to say one thing. That song you played on the podcast, I listen to it like 10 times a day and oh, it drives carp- my boyfriend nuts. The Carpenter? Yes, yes. Yeah. I listen to, I literally, I sing it every single day and I'm, I literally had to rewatch that episode to find the song. That but. is so funny. <laughs> Absolutely huge shout out to The Carpenter on Spotify. Um, I yes. still don't know if the artist of that song is aware that we played it, but um, honestly, <laughs> it's a bop. Thank you so much for calling in, Guinevere. You're validated. You. You're doing everything right. I'm sorry this is stressful. Uh, that totally sucks. Um, treat yourself to a big root beer float. <laughs> Hells yeah. Shut up. I literally was about to, so thank you. What? No That's problem. Wild. <laughs> That's so wild. <laughs> Are you having root beer floats often? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's all in the freezer and fridge. Okay. Really? Okay, well, I'm, I have a lot of questions yeah. about that, but we've got to get to some other calls. Thanks so much for calling in, Gwyneth, if you have the best day. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye. bye. Incredible. Incre- I, was about, I was about to say incredible. You absolutely know that I be snacking. Snacking, I would say, is maybe one of the most important traits to know about me. And I want my snacks to be high quality, and I want them to be delicious. And cashews, almonds, pecans, pistachios, dried mango, crystallized ginger dates, jelly beans, jawbreakers, root beer barrels, the variety is vast at nuts. Dot com. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means there is something for everybody. At Nuts.com, quality is a top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships, so they reach you deliciously fresh, and satisfaction is guaranteed. Nuts.com sent me a bunch of absolutely killer snacks, and I will say the one that really got me was the chocolate-covered gummy bears. I did not expect 
to have the overwhelming delicious flavor of chocolate covered gummy beers be a top tier snack for me. But guess what? They sent it. I ate the whole bag. I ate the whole bag in probably a day and a half. And I do not regret it. And I highly recommend you scour their slate of snacks at nuts.com. Right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash perfect person. So go check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash perfect person. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash perfect person. Get snacking, baby. It's officially time to kickstart your holiday shopping. Woo! Woo! But there's no cause for panic. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for mom, dad, teenagers, in-laws, or your best friends, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. I'll say I have trouble buying gifts for the men in my life, specifically the older men. Dad, I'm talking about you. My dad is a guy who works with his hands. He's got pretty much everything. But one thing I did find that I think he's absolutely gonna go ham for is a little fidget spinner with a bunch of drill bits on it. I know what you're thinking, er? A toy that's a tool? is the best thing to have. For any freaking person that likes to have a little fidget toy and likes to have a utility tool on lock. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out this holiday season. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $2.5 million to date, so get your holiday shopping done and also get a little bit of money towards a nonprofit. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash perfectperson. That's uncommongoods.com slash perfectperson for 15% off off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Yeah, I know. I was I, like, she had all the tools she needed. And so often, actually, people call in and they just go, here's what I'm thinking. And I'm like, that's great. Like, you're right. Yeah. If you just need to feel like you're doing the right thing, like, she has a totally great, like, well-rounded attitude about it, too. Absolutely. And I, I think... I think this was in the pre-show available yeah. from the Patreon. That's right. Um, I would, I would, sp I would, do that. <laughs> I would spend. I would do that. Um, I talked about like ungaslighting yourself. This is yeah. kind of what I mean because Guinevere, at the young age of twenty-one, yeah. knows all the stuff, knows what her needs are, knows that things are feeling a little bit off here, and like has expressed them healthily. It, from what we're hearing, we're only yeah. hearing it from one side. So, literally, it's like. Yeah, if people in your life are being like, you're crazy for thinking this, where are you? And you're like, no, that person is potentially showing narcissistic qualities, yeah, which right. like, you know, no judgment, people are people, but yeah. that's their thing to deal with. Yeah, like, right, not your thing to deal with. Like your thing to maybe understand, but sure. you don't need to then help them with that. It's not your responsibility. Yeah. If that's what you want, I guess, go for it, but it's not your responsibility. You're not going to say the one thing that makes the person go like, you're right, <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. have been manipulating you. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shared exactly. custody, achieved. Yes, you know, right. It's the Dark lock. Souls like meme of like custody, uh, you know, shared. <laughs> yeah, right. Custody, humanity restored. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. Um, the song that she listened to was a song that somebody called in and said they had a diss track written about them by an ex friend, oh. and um, we played it on the show. Is it good? It's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> that's that's the really best good. revenge. Where it's like. <laughs> God, I know this is about me and it sucks, but like, no, yeah. it's such a bop. <laughs> That's what the, the version calling in was like, I know it's good. Like, I just like, <laughs> don't, I don't want like, they're like, spreading this rumor around or whatever. It's fantastic. You shout out The Carpenter on Spotify. But I still wow. am not aware if the artist who's an independent musician is aware that we played it on the show. They just saw a spike in their Spotify Although views. And they like, did claim the ad revenue. I saw that is actually, so they must know because I got a hmm. notification on YouTube that was like, your this song is claimed by like whatever you know artist. Why? So I was like, maybe they do. I don't know. I, I'm fascinated by the whole situation. That's why I did. Um, I did a stream on uh, you know, maybe like beginning of October. Yeah. Um, where I was like, we're gonna do like a movie night, and I had to specifically go and like because I stream and I oh, don't you play had to copyright do royalty music. Free. I had to do royalty free. So I was like, I was like, what movies either are so old yeah. that it's a you know it's a thing, or they're uh, copyright expired because someone forgot to like yes. file something. Yeah, yeah. So I did um, 
Vincent Price's like House on Haunted Hill. <laughs> That's so fun. And it was a hell of a lot of fun. But the, uh, there was one portion, just one portion that was copyright claimed. Yeah. And it was like uh. one background song from like the 1950s <laughs> of like, spooky violin noise yeah. <laughs> and that's all it took so maybe there's something auto because i don't think yeah. a hundred year old man with a violin is being like you son of a bastard no yeah he's not you know. he's not going in there and watching <laughs> yeah. your stream i know it. he's gonna play this part he's not gonna skip it he's no one ever skips skip it my favorite song that i've ever made well we've got to get to another call yes, here let's do that cut um, me off at any time yeah. <laughs> i do be i do be talking hey so do I, baby. ADHD meds kicking in. Coffee, let's go. Make me go fast. <laughs> Coffee, make me go fast. Go-go juice, make me go fast. Tastes like chalky milk. <laughs> I got to put that on the soundboard, too. Um, all right, we've got a lover's conundrum mm. here. The conundrum. The lover's, lover's conundrum. That Dude. sounds like a, uh, a philosophy thing where it's like Plato's allegory of the cave, and we've got uh, the lover's conundrum. Um, <laughs> It's a fox on one side of the river That's that right. loves a chicken. That's right. That was in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible. Hi, Miles. Um, I'm a lesbian who fell in love with a girl I was like only talking to her for a week, and then we stopped talking. But now she's living in my building on the same floor as me, so I keep running into her, and it's really awkward because I'm desperately in love with her, and I don't know what to do, and I really need your help. I hope you're having a great day. Bye. Damien, we've got to be Cupid's little kids. <laughs> 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 Cupid's little kids. Cupid's a baby, right? I don't know. Hard I think it's an eternal baby. I think it's one of those questions where it's like, mm -hmm. there's a baby on screen and then it's like an anime where they're like, actually, there's a million years old. And you're like, that's a baby. <laughs> that's a like, baby. baby. That it's, looks yeah, like a baby. A it baby. talks like a baby. It's a duck. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, duck. It's a duck. Um, well, we're going to need to make love happen here. Glad you said happen. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> it seems like there's love that's one-sided and we're about to be the best romantics of all time. Mm. Hello. Hello, Cupid calling, because you have a crush on somebody who lives in your hall, and I'm here with Damien Haas to make it happen. Hello. I'm socially well adjusted. Oh my Let's God, hi, you're advice. kidding. <laughs> so tell us, we're going to- Wait, this is real? This is yeah. real. It's me, Miles Monsignore from the show, first oh person. God, me, Damien Haas. Here's my social security number. That's if you don't believe me, one, one, two. I'm very old. <laughs> I'm one, 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 one. Well, we're going to need a fake name for you, and it's got to be Balloon- Love Balloon. Balloon. I love that. Why don't you tell me what's going on with your lover's quarrel? There's a kind of a backstory. Mm. Last year, Four. I met this girl um, who used to be friends with my roommate. Like, they knew each other from high school. Okay. I was like, oh, she's kind of cute. But I was seeing someone at the time. So I was like, mm, no. The year, a whole year goes by. We've been friends this whole time. Talk occasionally. Like, I don't know, bonded over, like, the weird shit that happens on my campus because it's haunted. Mm. Oh, um, we're going to need to, like, just flagging that, casual. we're going to need to hear more details about sure, the haunted sure. campus. Keep going. <laughs> I'll have advice for that too. <laughs> very casual. Um, and then at the beginning of the semester, we started talking again and I realized she lived in my building and I was like, oh shit, this is the second year in a row where we're together. Mm. I'm not dating someone <gasps> and we live right next to each other. So we started talking and everything was good. And then out of kind of nowhere, she was like, oh, uh, there's a lot going on in my life. Can't date right now. Sorry. And I was like, that's totally fine with your life. Mm -hmm. um, but now we live like across the hall from each other and I see her every day. And it's been like a month since the last time we talked to each other. And it's super awkward. And it's like, I don't care if you don't like me. I just want to be friends. But mm -hmm. I also would love you. Okay. Sure. Got it. So... Mm, this is interesting. So you guys, were you dating or were you just kind of hanging out before she, like, was it how far along into dating was it before she made the thing of like, I'm too busy right now today? Yeah. We had been kind of hanging out for like a month and like my roommates were like in love with her. Okay, okay. Got it. And were you guys like going on actual dates? Were you kissing? Were you holding hands? Or was it sort of all preamble? You know what I mean? Was it like a talking phase? What kind of status was it? It wasn't like official dates, but like Got him. she'd be like, oh, do you want to go for a walk at like 6 p.m.? And then we would get back at like 3 a.m. and everyone would be like, where are you? It was hanging out, parentheses, romantic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got it. Okay, got that. Exactly. So that makes total sense. Now, um, interesting. Damien, where are you at? So I understand this um, feeling. You know, we all have our own versions of this where it's like, mm. oh, man, this could be so great. But oh, mm -mm. so you said yourself, Balloon, you know, I'm down <laughs> to just be friends, but also I'm, you know, so in love with you. Yeah. And unfortunately for where you seem to be at, you know, mentally at the moment, those things are not sort of uh, conducive to one another. Oh, interesting. I think, you know, for me, 
I need like either a yes or a no. When someone says right now or I'm busy, you know, that's always very hard for me, yeah. you know, when it comes to the like the nebulous sort of hanging on situation. So for me, if it's not like I'm available right now, mm. for yourself, maybe either you need the hard cut off or need some clarity. But um, obviously this is a crazy difficult situation. Yeah, I mean, here's what I'll, I'll ask you. Do you, th it's difficult now for you having a crush on this person across the hall and you guys not hanging out. Do you think it would be less difficult if you were friends hanging out all the time knowing that this person was not wanting to date you right now? Sure. Honestly, I think so, just because, like, she became so ingrained in, like, my very small friend group that, like, my roommate will be like, hey, like, how's she doing? And I'm like, I wish I knew. Like, oh, yeah, for it. sure. No, that is interesting. So you feel that, uh, and also I, ma I imagine that this person's starting to get ingrained in your friend group, and then all of a sudden they're just, like, gone. You kind of want to close the loop on making it all seem, like, copacetic? Yeah. Okay, well, here's the thing. You can't hang out with someone like uh, you can't have homework that is to get them to fall in love with you and be an actual friend to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't have an ulterior motive. Yeah. However, I know that that's advice from somebody who's hundreds of miles, millions of miles away from you. Really, and, you're just one mile. And really, I'm just one <laughs> miles. But um, I also know that like lots of people have crushes on their friends and whatever. But I think that if you are going to actually, like if your goal is to get closer to this person, whether it's as a friend or a romantic thing, the thing you got to do is you got to be cool as a cucumber. You got to yeah. not go into this with any preconceived notion or expectation because the coolest thing that you can actually do when someone says they don't want to date you is to shed it away and be like, that's cool. I just think you're great. Let's hang out and have that actually yes. be true. If that is not actually true, then you, I don't know. I, I hesitate to be like, then you should form a friendship that's b based on you wanting to date them eventually when they realize that you're cool. Yeah. It, you know, that's I, hard. I've been on the receiving end of that too. Like, mm -hmm. I think when someone sort of clearly communicates where they're at, mm -hmm. you know, you need to believe them. And you can be friends with someone yes. that you were formerly romantic Completely. with, but you need to be very honest about where mm -hmm. you're at. And I think because these feelings linger for you, you know, something that always has helped me um, when dealing with either a breakup or loss of any kind, because yeah. it's all part of grief, is um, there's the science behind uh, how your brain functions in, with neurons. Hmm. Um, it works as like computer RAM. It's just that we're gonna do little little bits of storage here and then, uh, ooh, brain <laughs> magic in the morning. <laughs> um, uh, it works as little bits of like random storage that you use for daily tasks of like, oh, I gotta get this thing done. And so, you know, a month is long enough that like a lot of the neurons in your brain have uh, been hmm. used to uh, hang out with your friends and also Balloon's friend is there. Yeah. And so like, you know, Every single neuron in your brain has to relearn that like, hey, Balloon's friend is not going to be there with this other friend group. They're oh. not going to be there. And it's so hard when you have to refresh that all the time, seeing them just across the hall from you. Yeah. And so every single one of those has to relearn. It's, it's why, you know, you end up in a shower after like three months after a breakup and being totally fine. And then yeah. you're like, oh, they're gone. It's, yeah, you right. know, you've just used that again, um, yeah. that specific neuron. So you just have to know you're going to be sort of refreshing that process every time you try to hang with them if you are not truly over them. And I would say also the thing that uh, is hard for me, and then I want to hear how you're feeling about this, yeah. but I, uh, in college, I think especially like you're young, you're, you're like, you're out here, you be dating. I feel like it's really easy to get fixated on someone mm -hmm. that said that they didn't want to hang out with you romantically. I certainly was in the situation where I was like, Oh, but it'd be so easy. Like, why can't we just, you know, whatever. And it's hard to move on from that stuff, especially because you see these people all the time. Colleges are pretty small. Like you yeah. run into the same people you have crushed on over and over. Yeah. And I would say that if I could give my advice to that person, it would be, hey, look, move on. College is long. Life is long. Move on. And then honestly, there's a chance that maybe later down the line, you guys get together. But in order for that to happen, you have to kind of move on first. Yeah. You have to allow yourself to be like, all right, let's say this person's not a romantic option. Let's say there are other romantic options. They've already told me this like temporary thing. And I would give yourself like two months to pursue other love interests while being friendly to this person in the hallway, being nice to them as a friend when you see them around and sort of like reestablish your relationship. This does not mean that the door is closed forever, but I wouldn't be watching the door to make sure that they arrive. And if in that your case, sense. balloon, it is literally the door. And it is literally the door so. because it's across <laughs> the hall, the balloon. 
<laughs> How does this resonate with you, Balloon? No, yeah, that makes a lot of sense and like is totally fair. And I like definitely care way more about it than I probably should. I've been there, by the way, to make you feel here, to make you feel seen. I have fucking totally. been there. hundred percent. The other like weird factor is that because we're friends, I've like noticed a bunch of stuff going on like in her life where I'm like, she's not okay. And I like, don't know how to be like, Hey, I'm concerned about you as a friend because I know that she knows I still have feelings for her. And I don't want her to think that I'm like trying to gain something else by being like, are you okay? Like something's not right. I think it's unfortunately not your responsibility. Yeah. And I hate to tell you that balloon, but I think that like, because of the circumstances that have been, that have been laid out, uh, the, like the most you can do. And I would maybe even caution you from doing this is like, ask her friends like, Hey, is she doing okay? Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but I think that it's not your yeah. responsibility and I hate to tell you that balloon. Cause I know it's not what you want to hear. It, it's not an easy thing to hear. I'm sure. But like, I think also like you miles, I'd yeah. say at most, like if there's any yeah, way right. that, you know, they could know that, you know, Hey, if you want to talk about something, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Um, and if not, I hope you reach out to someone like that's, that's the most. And even that is probably, you know, doing too much. But if that would make yeah. you sleep better at night, like that's great. And Completely. I, but yeah. Sometimes it's also an, uh, like I, whenever I've had an unrequited like love situation in the past where it's like, okay, me and this person went on one date, they said, Hey, actually like, I don't want to date anyone right now, whatever. I think it's important to, re to review the like circumstances of you like you see someone you're like oh my god like i love this person they yeah. love smoothies and they like <laughs> they are we'll uh, always have jumbo we'll always it was have our jumbo. paris it was, it was our paris they're like oh my gosh their favorite movie is that movie that no, <laughs> you don't get it we both love moulin rouge yeah we both actually are allergic to not, i mean not allergic but we don't like peppers or yeah. whatever. like it's like everything is like trickling into place in the jigsaw puzzles but really like you, this person is not who you are building them up to be. They are more than that. They are like a more complicated version of that. Mm -hmm. But because you sort of didn't get to finish the romance, you were only a month into this sort of like, will they, won't they, you don't, um, it's easy to put them on a pedestal and be Very like, so. if I was with them, I'd be so happy. And what you're not thinking about is you guys could, let's say this person was like, actually we should date. Then you guys get together and Maybe after three months of spending romantic time together, you realize that it's not for you. So yeah. I think that there's more than one outcome to unrequited love. And I think it's important to, especially if you're trying to move on, review it as a, this is a full person. If we were to be in a relationship, it would be a full relationship with ups and downs and this and that. And guess what? It's a different person that time too. Exactly. It's right? that person months later going through whatever they're going through. Yes. And you have to re-meet them. And that's why mm -hmm. even if you do end up together at some point, it's good to cut it off mentally for yourself now yeah because even if they come back months later who's to say you're going to be in a place where you're wanting to date them maybe you've mm -hmm. met someone else or maybe you're focusing on yourself yeah i just think like you know sometimes when people aren't as direct as they could be or should be because mm -hmm. it's hard to be it's so hard to be you end up filling in the blanks for yourself and you know miles you you said the phrase you know well but it'd be so easy like well yes. i don't really get it mm -hmm. you know i was in a situation previously where like so many things were off and factors yeah. were weird and i was like Hey, I don't really understand what's going on. And the explanation wouldn't make that much sense to me. And I'd be like, that feels weird, but I guess, okay, like for sure. And then it was like way later down the line that I'm like, oh, nothing was good that whole time. Yeah, right. There was a lot of shady stuff going on. And like, and I'm like, oh, I knew, I think I knew that. Yeah, right. I think I knew that. I just was listening to the words and being like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, right. So just look at your actual circumstances. I don't know. I'm a very busy person, but if I, this might hurt to hear, but if I really was like super into someone, I'd be like, Hey, I'm extremely busy and have a lot going on in my life. Mm -hmm. How can we make this work? Can we set aside time to figure it out? Right. I wouldn't be like peace. So mm -hmm. for now in general, it, it might just be a time to be, I'm sorry. I know that I'm no, sorry. That I, might have been Davey, what you said is hard for balloon to hear, but balloon, I, I agree. I, I think that I'm I'm too busy to date right now is a soft pass and a look, you're really great, but I think it's not the right time situation. Yeah. Sorry, Balloon. Definitely. I Sorry, know. Balloon. But Balloon, you're at your spooky haunted school. There's going to be so many other gals that you are going to be wanting to go into the haunted buildings with. Let me just tell you. 100%. That's true, but it's a Catholic school, so there's like five gay people here. 
Oh, I, there's way more than five I, gay people. By there's the way. so many more than five. <laughs> Knowing gay people. Catholicism, there's a lot more than five. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> that is correct. Your your options will only grow as as the school as, goes on. As like people get more access to social media and are like, wait a minute, hang like, on, is God <laughs> is he really real? You know, every, everything's gonna be fine. Um, and uh. Look, you're you're in a tricky spot. I've been there. I've certainly been there. And speaking of your thing being like, I do have so many memories of being like explaining to my friends like why it actually was totally chill and fine that like this relationship was falling. It's like, yeah, well, like we were boyfriend girlfriend for 24 <laughs> yeah. hours. And then she said actually she thought that was a bad idea. But that's good. And it's like, yeah. wait, no, what? the word boyfriend is a word from her past yeah, she that she can't hear <laughs> yeah. because. Uh, is any of this making sense to you guys? And you know, you hear it out loud, and you're like, "It made sense before." You guys are being weird. I'm uh, hurting my feelings. I gotta go. Like, it's, you know, it's right. It's like so. I think that look, you've you've been given a soft pass, but I think what you got to do is, um, uh, you know, try and move on. If you want to be friends with this person, that's great. Maybe there's an opportunity down the road, but for now, it's got to be just you. Float on, balloon. Float on, balloon. Float on. How you feeling before we let you go? <laughs> No, but that actually made me feel so much better. Thank you guys so much. Got yes! This. Go have fun, live your life, be a balloon animal. Balloon animal, I hope you have the most fantastic <laughs> evening. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much. Have such a great day. All right, bye. bye. Man. We changed some lives. We changed so lives here today. We really did. Yeah, that college feeling of being like, what? and it's so funny because <laughs> I'm sure that I've given the opposite of advice where someone's like, I have a crush on someone in my home. I'm like, here's how you're going to seduce them because it's so easy, yeah. but it's like, but the uh, the added information of she said she was too busy to date is like, that's a pass. That's, I hesitated to say that, but like- No, you're right. You're it, totally right. That's the tricky thing like when you're talking to real people right now because I'm like, <laughs> oh, there's some fun, goofy joke answers. It's but real. also like- No, it's soft pass. I'm, I'm not talking to- you know, young college age balloon. I'm talking to young Damien. Being yeah. Like, they're no. not interested. Like, No, totally, dude. Oh my gosh. I remember yeah. like, yeah, there was a summer where I was like, well, like, yeah, like she hasn't texted, but like, I'm pro like probably her phone. Like I had deluded myself into thinking like a girl's phone was yes. broken. Yeah. And it's like, no, she doesn't really like you and that's okay. And you can move on. Totally. And like, but I think it's also, it's so easy at that age to, yeah, like aggrandize these people that have told you no into being like, well, if I just was with them, I would be so happy and it would be this perfect thing. And it's like, yes. no, relationships uh, like require two people to be interested. And, you know, sometimes even two people that really care about each other and then it might not work even then. It's just 100%. like, when someone tells you no, you kind of got to hear them. Absolutely. And I think, you know, one thing that people sort of forget is like, regardless of your assigned sex at birth, regardless mm -hmm. of your gender uh, preference in re relationships, regardless of, you know, how you present yourself and your yeah. gender, doesn't matter. Your brain is wired chemically to like release hormones and dopamine when you see someone you like. Yeah. And because it's like, even if you don't want this, it's like, make babies, make babies, make <laughs> the species continue. And you're yeah, just like, right. okay. Yeah. And it's so easy to get lost in that. And you're like, oh my God, it's, it's love. It's love. Yes, like, this right. is, I've never felt this way before. And yeah. this has to be what people are talking about. Mm -hmm. And so I can't let this go. Yeah. And it's like, hey, new feeling just dropped. So I understand that this is like <laughs> shaking your world because you've never experienced a feeling before like this. Oh, yeah. It's also that freedom of college to be like, not only do I have a crush on this person, mm -hmm. but I can do whatever I want. Like, yep. I, it's like a new, it's like, I'm not just at my house, like, Bending to the whims of my parents' car. Yeah. Like I can do, you know, if I wanted to be with this person, I can do, you know, it feels so There's freeing. that pressure too of like, maybe you didn't find someone in high school. Maybe you went to a Catholic high school and there were even fewer options. Exactly. Right. But completely. Like it's, there's now this pressure of like, well, I'm in college. Like there's all sorts of different people here. So if I can't find something now, oh God, I'm unlovable. Yeah. It's, no. Yeah. No, yeah. it's wild. Yeah. Um, well, we got to get to another call here. Yeah. And I do be talking. I do. <laughs> hey, that's the show, baby. All right. We got to be talking here. Got it. And this is about someone who unfortunately absolutely um, pissed themselves. Metaphorically? Hi, Miles. I accidentally pissed myself in a Walmart in front of my coworker when we were hanging out of work for the first time together. I don't know what to do now. Please call me back. I can't tell if she works at the Walmart. I... 
I, she said it was her coworker. But right. Maybe they were hanging out at a Walmart. We're both brain scientists, um, <laughs> and then we were hanging out at the Walmart. Neuroscience went, piss. Yeah, that's um, a possibility. It's been a while since I've properly pissed myself. Um, what about you, Damien? Uh, thank you for. I was hoping that would come up today. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, hoping against hope, Miles. Um, you know what? I can't remember the last time I. Uh, pissed myself yes um, yeah i think it would probably have to have been like a sleep situation i don't i don't know if i've ever like in public situation in, yeah it was probably i mean I, the, mo the most iconic one i can remember that if for i'm sure i've told a version of was that i was uh in the computer lab uh, making flash animations in middle school okay and wow. i was so into the flash animation that i decided i'm not going to be standing up to pee i'm gonna actually just gonna do this until it gets so painful that i simply must pee and i have to run to the bathroom yeah and unfortunately as i was running and to the bathroom me standing up sort of jostled yeah. everything around and as i ran to the bathroom at the computer science library i urinated all over myself pissing my jean shorts just just sopping you know what's cool is um, middle school's already so easy to navigate. I think you needed a little bit of an extra challenge. Yeah, middle school's to be, a breeze. Uh, the computer lab piss piss baby. <laughs> the, um, yeah. And then I was in the middle school computer lab bathroom and I was covered uh -huh. in piss. Sure. And of course I opened it up to see if there was a friendly in the library. I uh, saw a kid named Patrick that I knew and I said, Patrick, I'm obviously tears in my eyes. Of course. Patrick, come here. The faucet messed up, and I'm covered in in water and, <laughs> and <laughs> ammonia. I guess. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, "What? Like, what are you talking about?" And I was like, "Can you go to the lost and found and see if there's any shorts?" And he was like, "What? Wait, what? wait, wait, Patrick, Patrick, hold up! Before no, you go, before I'm a 36, go. 32, and this is the time where like guys were wearing kind of capris as skate shorts and That's cargo right. shorts. I want to look fashionable if I'm gonna steal. I need to Those be fashionable. Okay, okay. And then he went and he came back and he was like, there's no pants. Obviously, no one's losing their pants in the last yeah. bounce. Also, yeah, that would actually open up a whole new can of worms of investigation. Like, oh, I left my, I'm sorry, I left my uh, <laughs> pants on the ground. That's where yeah. I left them. Hey, kid walking around um, in underwear behind the scenes. I was just, uh, yeah, uh, flopping around in public. That's um, right. Just, around. oops. But so then I was like, you know, obviously I have to dry off. Sure. So I sprinted out of the computer lab and I was like, I'm just going to lay on a park, a bench, a park bench, a bench at the school. Computer lab makes me think of like after school activities. Is this like during school? This is hours? lunch. This is lunch. Oh yeah. So I'm thinking I got to okay. go back to class. You're on the clock. I'm on the clock. And I also knew, so I'm sitting out on a little bench and I'm just sort of <laughs> in the sun trying <laughs> to dry eagle. as quickly as I can. <laughs> And then by, it's nothing not, about this is inconspicuous, by the way. <laughs> I think you just you like rolled a nat one on every single <laughs> opportunity to be like, how do I hide the piss? Like, it's a faucet. <laughs> it's a faucet. I'm crying. It yeah. messed up. It hit me in the pack, and only that. Like, and then, like, and then it really, it really culminates. I think I dry off maybe, but I know I smell like piss. I must. Yeah, smell on account like of piss. the piss. On the account of the piss. Yeah. <laughs> I must smell like piss. Sure. And so then in the afternoon, I knew I was going. It was a Friday, so I was going to my friend Eric's house. And we're going to Eric's house and I'm in the back of his mom's car and I'm sure she's like, oh, like what's that smell yeah. like piss? And I'm th and so the thing I say, and Eric had a pool and it was winter. And the thing I say is, well, I'm so excited. To, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm, I'm so excited to swim that I'll probably jump in with all my clothes on. When you're a kid, you think you're so slick when you just announce shit. Like, I, I was I always was afraid of my weight as a kid. I'm like, what if we all swam with our shirts? Or just I did. <laughs> like it's, you're fooling no adult. And they're like, oh. Yeah, they're like, oh. I'm sure his mom was like, oh, he's pissed, he pissed himself. So as soon as I arrived at Eric's house, I went, okay, so excited to swim. And I ran to his pool and I jumped in with all my clothes on. So I was trying to wash the piss out of my shirt. You so that was the one bit of luck where they didn't have that purple. Yeah. Hey, look, that's the piss source. Uh, Is that chemical. real? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that I was real. I didn't realize that was real back when we were young. I don't know how old you are, but like fifty. I think no, we both. I think we've both <laughs> been to a blockbuster. So oh um, yeah, baby, miss, the miss a blockbuster. There's still one available. I think. Is that right? In Alaska. Oh. I, I'll just believe you. I don't have to go. <laughs> I think there's a documentary <laughs> called The Last Blockbuster. Am I making that up? No, no, that sounds great. I think it is true. But I, yeah, I, I miss the, uh, the the warm smell of a Blockbuster in those yeah. little popcorn buckets or whatever. And that, uh, the just suspicious stains on the carpet where you're and just you're like, like how'd that get that? Who spilled something? Who spilled something I right next to High Fidelity? Yeah. Oh, God, it's always High Fidelity. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, that you probably didn't play that off very well. And given how much we've laughed at all of this, I don't know if we're qualified to give advice. Let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> Hello? 
Hello. You're calling. We're calling you actually because you peed yourself in a Walmart with your coworker. And They're I'm, in the car. And I'm obviously here <laughs> with da I'm here with Damien Haas. Hello. Hi. No way. What's happening? My boyfriend's in the car with me. I haven't told him this story. Let's I don't know how go. I knew, but someone was in this car. I yeah. was like, this is, you're not alone right now. I knew we were going to out you for peeing in uh, in a Walmart. But so <laughs> we're going to need to give you a fake name, Damien. Uh, tummy Sire. It's got to be Tummy Sire. Tummy I don't know what your <laughs> Tummy Sire. I don't know what your criteria are for <laughs> fake names. You pointed oh at me. We were literally just listening to your podcast in the car right now. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> wait, wait, perfect person, or are you talking about Damien's podcast? Oh, I don't have a podcast. I'm, um, the, I'm the one. Person. I'm the one oh. white dude that does not. Have I know. A podcast. Hey. No, I was. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, I was two. hoping it was going to be the Wrecking Ball crew, but it's okay. That's okay. I know. The Wrecking Ball crew is, uh, they're benched. No, I don't know. But they, uh, so tell me about what happened with you and your coworker. Basically, the university I go to, we do like, this was like a while ago, but hmm. it's still awkward. We do like 801 day. So you wake up really early, early in the morning hmm. and you take a like shot of alcohol at 801. You drink the whole entire day. Wait, you and, take it at eight oh one a.m. Yeah, and Ugh. then you drink the whole day. Jesus. So I was with like all my friends, and I was like, "Oh, you should just go with us. It'll be so much fun." And I was like, "I'm underage, so sure. we have to put it in water bottles if we want to walk around because you know we're gonna get in trouble by the police if we get caught." Mm. And we went to Walmart to go get water bottles, and I really had to pee, <laughs> but. I was like, we were running late to like go back and go out and start drinking and stuff with all my friends. And I was like, it's fine. I'm just going to hold it in. And we were checking out at the register. Everything was fine. I was like, should I just stop at the bathroom? No, it's fine. And we're leaving. And I pretend like there's a cramp in my foot. Mm. And I go on the ground. I, I just, I peed myself. And... <laughs> And I look up at her and she's like, she thought like the water bottle, I don't know why, but she uh, thought it was full of water. She's like, you're spilling the water. I was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, just get up and run. Just get up and run. So we ran uh, out of the Walmart. Uh, and and yeah, that was it. And then she didn't go out with us after. Because she was so shocked? I think so. And like, <laughs> she told me at work, she was like, by the way, like, <laughs> like I have friends that that work at Walmart, and they like saw you do it on the cameras. <laughs> like oh. there's like this big bottle at <laughs> Walmart. Oh, oh my. Okay. Okay. So now it's like really awkward. Is it awkward? Well, here's the question. Like, like <laughs> so, what kind of campus? Do you have a job on campus. What is your job? Like, what kind of job do you have? I'm a server. Oh, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> that makes total sense. So you're at this. You're a server, and this other coworker is another server. Yeah. Gotcha. And w when you say it's awkward, describe the feeling. Is it is it a feeling that you're having, or is it a vibe, an aura that's happening at the restaurant? It's kind of a vibe because I feel like I can't even talk to her now because we both know what I did. Okay. So here's my my first thought is one. Uh, congratulations, because you've made it through a really embarrassing situation. Yes. And you've come out the other side. You've made it, You've come through the other side, and you're stronger for it. Yeah. And this is going to be a story you're going to tell a lot throughout your life. I just want you to know. 100%. And you are going to seize the moment and be proud that you peed in the Walmart, actually. I think that's, that's maybe the move, because yeah. um, Tommy Sire, I got to tell you, mm. you know, you pissed yourself in a Walmart. That's a thing that happened. So that's that's okay. Like I, okay. I don't I don't talk about this much. Um, mm. but every day of my life I have at least once made a peepees. Um so it's something right. that everybody mm -hmm. does and has to do. We all do it. So, so like I think you need to be given grace because there is there is a need to pee sometimes. And yeah. that's just, we all have embarrassing situations. Mm. And at the same time, I'm sure that was a big surprise for the person you were with, you know? Uh, yeah. I think that like, if, if I were you, here's what I'd do. If I was feeling awkward in front of a, a coworker that I pee myself in front of, I'm thinking a, a greeting card that says you open it up and it says, sorry, I peed myself in the Walmart in front of you. Sure. And you hand it over and they open it up in front of you and you say, 
hey, I'm really sorry. Can we just pretend that didn't happen? And they're going to go, yeah, okay, and laugh about it. And That's actually a, really funny. And it's going to be a fun little thing that you move on password. The thing right now is, have you brought it up to them? Like, you said, did they tell you that they had friends in the security camera? Like, how did it get left? Were you yeah, like, oh, my God, that was so far. Like, yeah, because, like, did you admit that it was embarrassing to her? No, like, she walked up to me at work, and she was like, so, like, you you know what happened the other day? And I was like, yeah, like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> she was like, well, and then she told me how, she's like, I have friends at Walmart, and they, like, saw it. And I was like, okay, and, like, we haven't talked about it since, but it's just. Like, I, I don't think we can hang out again. <laughs> no, you definitely can. But I think what you have to do is be like, hey, by the way, I have been nonstop thinking about how embarrassing it was that I peed myself in the Walmart. So I just wanted to tell you that, like, I think that it's okay for you to just voice that. There's nothing weird about you voicing that it's embarrassing. If anything, it's weird that you, like, if anything, if she thinks that you aren't embarrassed by it, that is worse than you voicing that you're like, by the way, <laughs> yeah. this was a total freak accident. Like, I'm not proud of this. And also, like, I will say, you're sort of playing with, like, a, the deck stacked against you a little bit. Because yeah. I think this person, like, their friends who work at Walmart, no shade, no disrespect, but maybe a little bit. I'm assuming the Walmart security is not scanning every situation, being like, what's going on here? Who's doing what? I'm pretty sure yeah. that would have required her to be like, hey, at about um, 8.09 a.m. Uh, on a Sunday... Um, this thing happened in the parking lot. Can you look through the footage to see it? So like, she's sort of taking it a little far. That's a good point. In my mind. Yeah. Um, or because yeah, she would have had to say, do you think, is this someone you want to be friends with? Yeah. She's so cool. Okay, also, it okay. didn't happen in the parking lot. It happened in the store. Yeah. So there was the like, a, Fair yeah, enough. there was a big puddle. I still just Wait, think sorry, so, 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 oh. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> did you say that, did you say there was a puddle? It was a lot. <laughs> it was bad. I I was That's under the, why I don't think I you was, understand the extremeness. I was under the impression was like, that, yeah, I was like, just go. Woo. Yeah. You're then, a champion. You're a champion. I want to tell you that right now. Alternative <laughs> advice, if, if your coworker is not uh, receptive to your, you know, very open and sweet yeah. communication, um, you fill a water bottle. Um, mm -hmm. you, it's one of those squeezy top bottles. Pay the extra 10 cents at the gas station, get right. a squeezy top bottle. As they're reading the card, um, you know, the miles pitched, uh, that's when you do a little squeeze. And if they yeah. say no, that's when you point down and look and say, oh yeah, guess I'm not the only one who pissed themselves. themselves. Hey, look everyone, <laughs> look, yeah. look at my look. coworker. My and then, coworker, too, she pissed herself. Yeah. And then you win social interactions. Yeah, then I think that that's honestly to double down and to blame them and say, well, you pissed yourself. That wasn't me, it was you. Yeah. It's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, and I'm not gaslighting you. You're crazy, and everyone's been talking about it. And I'm your only real friend, and you always do this. <laughs> you always do this. And there's a table at table two that needs an extra sushi boat. But we're going to take you off that and put you on table number one, because yeah. you're the piss girl now. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think that yeah, you got a couple options here that are all really good. Blaming her for taking the piss is, I think, option number one. Blaming two, number two has got to be just telling her that you're embarrassed about it. And then, like, I don't know. Embarrassing things make people seem more charming, in my opinion. I think so. If they're honest about it, they're like, oh, my God, this embarrassing moment. It, like, makes us, it brings us together. And if someone isn't receptive to that, there's generally a lack of, you know, maturity on their side. Exactly. You've got to be given the grace to make mistakes. It's not high school. You can piss yourself at a Walmart. And yeah. Not, Honestly, not be a social pariah. You do that at a Walmart at any time. And by like, the way, you are not the only one that was pissing themselves at Walmart on that day. That day. Yeah, that day. 100%. Hundreds. Okay. So sounds good. <laughs> and I and I and I beat myself at the computer lab in middle school. I was just talking about it to make yeah. you feel seen. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay is the fun answer. By the way, don't you shame me for being in the computer lab. You feed into the Walmart. Okay. You're like a loser. <laughs> you hang up. I think it's because we didn't actually give fixable advice. It was like, talk to them or do something no, silly. <laughs> that is the advice. Tell her that you're yeah. embarrassed about it. Hey, I'm embarrassed about this. And I think writing in a little note is just like a funny little extra bit that adds to it. But I think that she just needs to know okay. that it's just like, by the way, I don't think that was normal. I'm fucking embarrassed about it. It. Like, I think that that makes you a, um, a a more empathetic character. Can I do one little punch up on this pitch here? Yeah, please. Um, don't get like a blank inside card. Get like a um, 
happy like 70th uh, year of sobriety yes. grandma. Yeah. Like yeah. get the most specific, specific thing so you can get, specific. cross it out with a Sharpie very poorly and just write, sorry, I pissed myself in Walmart. And that is so f- deeply funny to me. I, I like I, that. I think that's the win right there. Happy 70th year of sobriety grandma yeah. is a, yeah. yeah. Those are flying off the shelves, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for calling in Tummy what was the Tummy name? Sire. Tummy Sire. Your royal, your royalty. Your royalty, Tummy Sire. How you feeling before we let you go? I'm feeling good. <laughs> hell, hell yeah, boyfriend. How you feeling? Is he still in the car? <laughs> Did he tuck yeah. and roll? <laughs> he tucked and rolled I'm after the story. Feeling, feeling great now that I've heard this story. <laughs> I haven't told anyone. We kept it a secret. I was like. Told her, I was like, you can't tell a soul that I did this. No, this is, is you tell everybody, tell everybody your embarrassing stuff. Doug, uh, you send her a clip of this. Okay. Yeah, send her, send her a clip of this show. Yeah. Okay, I will. <laughs> and boyfriend, uh, the thing at the very least, you got to piss yourself in the Walmart out of solidarity. Yeah, do it. Support your partner. I'll try. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, all you can do is try. Thanks so much for calling in. I do appreciate it. You have a fantastic evening. <laughs> You too. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness. She's done for. She's done for. Th- no, by the way, that's yeah. To me, like if I witness someone pee in, fr- first of all, one, like I think that the, actually the other server is doing a disservice by not being like, oh my God, like that was so crazy. That was so funny. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Cause if somebody did like, if we were on this podcast right now and you peed yourself and you were like, I just pissed myself. I'd be like, oh my God, it's okay. Sure. Like let's, and I would help you through it. And then like a week later, I text you, text you like something's fun about it. Yeah. And like, look, I'll say this. The other person is allowed to have a reaction. Completely. Because that's not normally like <laughs> no, part of the great. built-in plans. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, and things go awry, but that's usually like that, you know, you roll the dice. That's, yes. that's a lower possibility of uh-huh. just your friend being like, by the way, I'm pissing actively right now. <laughs> um, look, look at me. I've got a cramp in my foot. Uh, and then, you know, but also, at the same time, like, I'm curious what the conversation was like afterwards, because obviously Tummy Sire was very embarrassed. Yeah. She just had said at the end, like, no, I told the other server, like, you can't tell anyone this. You can't tell anyone. Mm-hmm. So maybe there is that sense of, like, it's awkward. let's not bring it up because yes. you really don't want me to. But yeah, also, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it could be fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, I think you're right about that, where it's like, yeah, I think she needs to own it and be like, by the way, I'm still very embarrassed about this, yeah. but I want to laugh with you about it, like, kind of thing. When you know? I said we didn't give her actionable advice, what I meant more was like, <laughs> it's not easy. No, it's Like, so. it's either a joke thing or like, you have to sit down and be like, hey, hey, we talk about the pee pee situation. <laughs> we talk about the pee pee Walmart. I made, I made um, tummy water on the ground there. <laughs> and and tummy sire. Tummy Speaking sire of- water on the ground. I didn't mean to, and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about it. Um, well, uh, Damien. Yes. That brings us to our final segment of the show, a segment we like to call Get Real. Okay. This is a segment where we force a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. I appreciate you doing the show. Um, no, Damien. <clears throat> what is something that you are working on in your personal life either on the way that you view yourself or the way that you are interacting with the world, but what's like a goal you have just for you? Not like a career goal or something like Mm. that, but like it could be a hobby goal. What's something that you're excited to like pursue in the next six months? I am excited to become someone who is more confident in their safety. Oh, wow. Your safety is not contingent on how others feel about you. Yeah. Your safety is not contingent on making sure you make the right choice all the time. Yeah. Your safety lies in your core values as a human and your ability to stick to them while making space for others to feel what they feel. If you mess up, you can own up to that. Yeah. You don't have to fix it right away. You can give someone time to feel what they feel too. How real do you like to get on this? I love that answer. Yeah. I think that's so. Um, I think that's so important. And, and when you say safety, do you mean like um, your safety to be your physical safety, or your safety to be you in every scenario and not feel like that's going to be sacrificed somehow? Uh, safety is more. Um, there's a general vibe. Oh, where were you starting? Great. I doubling up the time. Safety is uh, emotional, physical, all of the above. Yeah. You know, anything you do when you're feeling like sad or in crisis mm-hmm. or whatever. It all boils down to that, you know, am I going to have enough money for rent? Am I, you know, going to be ousted from my friend group? Like, Mm -hmm. it's all part of safety. Yeah. And so um, that shouldn't have to come at such a high cost to yourself. 100%. It's just just okay to, 
let things be and mm -hmm. you know yeah i, I love like, i love yeah. that answer too because I, I i've been thinking about that a lot like um I don't know. The way that I'm thinking about it is just like the environments I feel safest in too. Like, and uh, I feel great, very grateful for my group of friends. And I think there's such a, you can kind of tell in different groups of friends or people, like when I'm in a group of people that are new, that are not necessarily like people I super feel comfortable around. Mm -hmm. It's hard to authentically be myself. It's hard yes. to sort of say things. And then it's like that contrasted with like my best friends where it's just like, I am free around the people that I really am close to. And I feel Absolutely. like I can say anything. I can be wrong. I can like, yeah. you know, do whatever I need to do. And that feeling is so safe to me. Like the That's feeling, exactly what I mean. The feeling of being able to be freely and authentically myself, uh, like contrasted with like when I'm meeting new people and you know how, whenever you meet new people at first, you're sort of just like a, like you're like the, Hey, hello, how are you version of yourself? Kind of. Yeah. You'll dip a toe in the water a little bit of like, right. Here's yeah. Yeah. Here's how like, I actually want to be, you know, in front of you. That's sort of what I mean. I'm yeah. like, I'm trying to skip that part because it's like, that. Hey, not everyone's going to be for you and you're not going to be for everybody. Completely. Like, so why, you know, for like dating advice when people are like, you know, yeah. is this text okay to send? It's like, is that what you want to say? Yeah. Great. If they react poorly to that, then either there's something one of you needs to work on or you're not right. for each other. Everything should be easier than we mostly make it. A hundred percent. And I think especially for dating, it's so important to be yourself right away because mm -hmm. you're either going to be yourself right away and you're going to get the response. Either they are going to like that or they're going to not be for you or whatever. Or you're going to be someone else and then slowly transition into who you are. And then you're going to get the reaction. Like, yeah. And so I've, with dating, I think it's always like people are like, I'm going to put my best foot forward and like be sort of the like this version of myself. And it's like, no, be you. Be charming you. But then, yeah. you know, they're, you're going to get to what you need faster. Than it's it, you it's know. the advice you get from like... When you get to this age, you learn that like all the <laughs> advice from elderly people where it's like, just be yourself. Yes, that sounds like so right. stupid. You're like, God, that's so stupid. And then later you're like, oh, what you mean is it's a waste of time and energy to try to put something else forward when yeah. naturally you're going to be something else. You could have said that, Graham Graham, you know. <laughs> So yeah, it's yeah. Cliches are a cliche for a reason. Like right. it's like they're said a lot because they're often true. It's like yeah, be your you know truest self is like it's really hard to do. But if you can do that and uh, have people accept you for who you are, like it's just gonna feel so good. Especially mm -hmm. like it's, you know we had to talk to a couple of people who are like going through college and stuff. Yeah, college is a time when it's really hard. Like I remember having friend groups and being like. Oh, I'm not like this. Are, these are not my people, but like they'll do for now. Like it's yeah. like I don't have anyone, so I might as well kind of like be doing this sort of other thing where I don't feel like. Or and I'm sure you know you're a comedian as well. So when you're like being funny and someone's like, "Oh, you're so weird," and it's like you don't get that I'm being funny on right. purpose. Like I'm doing a silly. I'm yeah. being silly on 100%. purpose. Like yeah. I'm not fucking weird. Like I'm just like, you know, I'm doing this so that you'll laugh or whatever. That's the only type of YouTube comment that makes me frustrated oh is when someone's God. like, Damien's so stupid that he doesn't know what this is. It's I'm like, crazy, no, the dude. joke is that I don't know what it is. You the one who stupid am. <laughs> like, yeah, like no, that's what gets me. I totally get that too. Like, yeah, and I think another important thing that you said is like, yeah, not everyone will uh, be for you and like, that's okay. And yeah. especially with the internet where you put stuff out, millions of people see it or whatever. And it's so important to be like, actually, if you're specific enough that you're not gonna be for everyone, that is a good thing. Yes. And it's gonna mean more to the people that you are for 100%. or whatever. They'll um, walk into a subway and go like, I don't like sandwiches. They'll be like, okay. Okay. You can go <laughs> anywhere else like you don't have to be like i don't want to be here like, yeah exactly <laughs> don't go don't, don't be in subway don't do that <laughs> uh well damien thanks so much for doing the show my absolute pleasure miles thank you very much dude this is a blast uh what do you got going on uh coming up that you want to promote for people to go check out um always uh announcing new stuff on my social media is just at damien haas uh that's d-a-m-i-e-n-h-a-a-s um i twitch stream uh tuesday thursday sunday um, we have a great, really accepting and fun community. Um, it's more about the conversation than the games, even yeah. if you're not a capital G gamer. Um, <laughs> but I love doing that. I'm starting to upload more to my YouTube channel. Um, 
which uh, who knows? Who knows what's in store for that? Mm-hmm. Um, it was just announced that um, this is one of the rare times that you can announce it before the game actually comes out. Um, the new uh, Trails game, uh, Trails in a Daybreak, um, is uh, I'm, I'm the lead boy in that, yes, um, which dude. I'm very excited about. Um, so that'll be out next year. Um, and otherwise, you can find me on uh, all over the place, like on mm-hmm. Smosh. So, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Right. Well, check out all Damien's stuff. And if you're having a problem out there, just remember that no matter who you are or what you are, perfection is only a call away. That was a HeadGum Podcast.